Welcome to the Online Course Master Show, where you will learn how to create and sell your very own online courses. I'm your host, Phil Ebener, and with Jeremy Deegan, we're excited to dive into another great topic today, setting goals for your students. Visit OnlineCourseMasters.com for show notes to view the video version of this episode and to see an archive of all our past episodes and guests. While you're listening, make sure you hit that subscribe button and take a moment to leave a rating, which helps us reach an even larger audience and to continue to put this type of content out there for free for all of you. So first, welcome Jeremy to the show. Hey buddy, how's it going? It's going very well. I was thinking that something we can do to maybe make these episodes a little more interesting is to share some fun facts about us or today maybe we can talk about kind of just what we're working on and maybe this is something we can do over the weeks as we work on different things. I think maybe people are interested in like just the day-to-day stuff that we're working on. Even though this season is all about specific sort of goals and topics within the world of online courses, we still want to talk and cater to everyone listening who is interested in all the other stuff. So uh, maybe you can get, kind of share about what projects you're working on right now, uh, kind of what day-to-day stuff you're working on. Yeah, for sure. Uh, today's actually been uh, really productive. My wife and I were able to go out to lunch together and do kind of like a mid-month planning um, and kind of like a spring planning. Mm-hmm. So we have uh, we do a bullet journal. Have you ever heard of that before? I've heard of it, but don't yeah. really know. It's just a real quick way of journaling and scheduling tasks. So we we do bullet journaling, and today we were able to sit down and kind of come up with some things that we want accomplished by the end of this month. So it's good we're talking about goals today. And uh, yeah, so got a lot of uh, planning done, uh, ideas to kind of clean up the house, do that spring cleaning kind of stuff. And then uh, just continuing to work on courses. Uh, last month, Udemy had a um, challenge to try to get a digital market or any kind of marketing course mm-hmm. done um, in their topic selection. I picked just a general digital marketing for beginners course. I started it and I didn't get it launched in time, um, but I still want to finish it. So I'm in the middle of that course right now. It's uh, coming along pretty nicely. And uh, that's what I'll be working on probably for the next week or two. Nice. But uh, awesome. what about you? What you got going on? Uh, always busy. I guess the one thing that I'm working on right now is I'm redoing my big photography masterclass flagship course, my best selling course. And this week in particular is all editing. Uh, a couple weeks ago or maybe a month ago, two of my friends who are co-instructors for the class came down uh, we shot it all for over a week, and now we're we're editing it all together. So sometimes, like I think it's just the quality of this course that's it's taking a lot longer to edit um, because it's talking head video, it's B roll with a second camera, it's lots of photos and graphics, and that's a lot longer for me to edit than some of my screencast sort of based um, courses which sometimes I can edit, create and edit the course in a week or two. But this one really is, it's taking like two, like a few months to create the whole course. I've actually been, I mean, with pre-production and scripting, which we're going to talk about in a couple episodes. uh, It's, yeah, this is almost like a four or five month process for creating this course. But the goal is like, I'm putting all this work and the goal is to have this be a flagship course that sells for three plus years and is like basically a full-time income from this one course. Uh, So that's partly why we're putting so much effort into it. So yeah, yeah, that's what that's, I'm working on. <laughs> that's going to be awesome. I'm uh, also looking forward to an episode where we can talk about outsourcing because mm-hmm. I would like to talk to you about your thoughts on having a big course like this outsource, you know, how it would save you time. Uh, I know the photography masterclass is kind of like your baby. Yeah. So I don't know if you'd be able to give the editing away to someone else for that or not. Yeah, it's kind of like one of those things. Well, we were talking about perfectionism in maybe the last episode or a couple episodes ago. And it's, yeah, the editing of this class, it's like I'm so particular about and it is hard to give away. But I mean, in the long run, I mean, that's what 
we should be doing is mm-hmm. letting go of some of these tasks because it doesn't have to be perfect. And as long as the content's there, it's going to help help the students achieve their goals, which is what this episode's all about. <laughs> yeah, let's go ahead and talk about that. So uh, we're talking about goals for students, not particularly for mm-hmm. us, but what is the goals that we want the students to achieve once they've taken the course or as they're going through the course? So uh, basically, let's start off with why are goals important? Yeah, for sure. And this is good. It comes after the previous episode, which was about structuring an engaging course. And we talked a lot about brain dumping ideas and uh, just brainstorming all of your ideas for lessons and topics. But actually setting goals for your students can come before that. And it's probably a good idea to um, think about what goal your course has for the student before you even start really structuring your course. It kind of goes hand in hand. But there's a lot of reasons why really coming up with specific goals is important. Um, and I've listed five uh, or written down five that we can kind of talk about. One is that it helps you understand how to teach the course better so you can build lessons that take a student from whatever level they're at to the goal. Uh, So if it's complete beginner to advanced, if it's knowing nothing to beginner, it just helps you to sort of think about the content in that way and always come back to, are we trying, are we really helping the student achieve their goal? Uh, Number two is that it helps you to target a specific customer and that's going to help you sell better and sell more. If you know that your goal is to help students take better photos, that's a pretty general goal that allows you to market to a pretty wide audience. But if your goal is to help people understand how to retouch photos in Photoshop, Photoshop, uh, (laughs) tongue twister, then that's a very much more specific advanced goal that means you're going to be targeting a different type of customer. So that was the two point was helping you target a specific customer. Three is in the same vein, it helps you to brand and sell your course. And what I mean by this is like literally in your course descriptions, in your videos, in your promotions, you taught, you really want to talk about that, those goals and the benefits of the course, which is what the student's going to be able to do by taking this course. So that by knowing your goals, you, you're more focused in that sense. Number four is it helps students find the right course for them Because instead of just seeing a a bunch of courses that say they teach photography, if they're looking for a course that teaches them how to take better photos with their smartphone, and that's listed in your course description, that's what your outline shows, that's what your promo video talks about, then that's more likely going to be the course they enroll in. And also, this the goal is to get people who really want to be in your course you don't want to, you don't want people to sign up for your course who aren't really interested in that goal. And if you don't set your goals clearly, your students aren't going, their expectations aren't going to be met. And that leads to worse reviews, which Mm -hmm. in most of the marketplaces is the most important part of ranking well. So we can dive into some of these a little bit more, but that was number four is it helps the students, right students find the right course for them. And number five is it helps students feel like they are learning because you're setting them up for success by saying this is the goal for this course. And by the end of the course, they should be able to achieve that goal. And if if you're actually teaching them, they're going to feel like they've achieved that goal. Uh, Again, rather than just sort of not setting goals for your students and having it be super general and them not really understanding, well, am I learning something new? There's like so much in this class, maybe it's too much. Um, If they feel like they're learning, you're again going to get better reviews, which helps you to sell more courses. So that's the goal for most of us at the end of the day. Yeah, very good. Now, uh, later on, I do want to go through some examples that we can go through, but let's touch a little more on these. Um, so it sounds like when we're setting goals, we want to be specific because mm-hmm. we want to really talk to the person who's taking our course so they understand kind of what they're getting into and what they're going to learn and what they should be able to achieve uh, by the end of that course. Um, 
so I just wanted to maybe go through these one by one. So first we had, you know, help, help you understand how to teach a course, help, help you target a specific customer, help you brand and sell your course, helps the students find the right course for them, and then help students feel like uh, they are actually learning. Um, now, when we set goals, one question I wanted to ask you was, do you feel that you should set one overarching goal and everything be pointed toward that goal? Or are you setting goals on, say, an individual section basis? Or uh, could you set multiple goals? I think that uh, that's a great question. And I think that kind of determines whether your class is going to be a big sort of flagship comprehensive course versus a more niche specific course. Big flagship courses can have multiple sort of even large goals within it. Um, going back again to the photography master class, our goal is to help students take better photos, to understand and feel comfortable with the camera that they have, to edit photos and feel comfortable doing that, and to be able to make money from their their photos. I mean, overall, that I guess the bigger goal is we want to help you become a photographer, but that's not specific enough, especially when we're setting up and kind of laying out the sections for the course and organizing it. And even within each section, you should have more specific goals for that section. But on the other hand, we have uh, I have like specific courses on specific types of motion graphics, you know, learn how to make a intro bumper for your videos or learn a specific type of flat animation. Um, those are more specific where I don't have like big general, like lots of goals in that course. It's really just one. Um, so yeah, I don't, I like this idea though of it being specific and you you always hear like the term smart goals, which is specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, um, T time bound. I guess that's one definition for I'm, it. I'm, so timing. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I like trying to stick to that, but I never follow like hard rules. So I don't think you have to like make every single goal um, smart in that in those specific uh, definitions of it. But of course, making it specific and and attainable too. I like this idea of attainable. Like sometimes, um, you know, if you're trying to teach a big topic, you can't teach it in an hour. Is it attainable in an hour worth of content? Maybe not. And so it helps you to understand too, like how long should your course be? Something we're going to talk about more in the next lesson. Uh, yeah. yeah, and you know, I think being specific is uh, something that's very important. It's something that I've learned as an instructor over the past couple of years is that the more, and you mentioned this about like, say the reviews, the more specific that you are, you narrow down your audience and you narrow down who you're talking to, but it's much more beneficial because mm -hmm. you're going to have a much more targeted person, a targeted audience to take your course and enjoy your course than to try to, you know, make your course for everyone. Yeah. Uh, we've talked about this in the past and I feel really strongly about this, that if I am making a, uh, you know, how to do wedding photography for beginners you know, that's a very specific thing than a, uh, you know, photography for everyone course. Mm -hmm. Um, and the problems that you run into is that if you have photography for everyone, the advanced people are going to think that the beginning sections are too slow yep. and the beginners are going to think that the advanced sections are too fast for them. And you've talked about maybe having some tips in there where you could say, Hey, this, this lesson or this video is a little more advanced than, than common, which I think helps. But I think if you have in your mind at the beginning that it's very specific to who you want to target, who you want to take your course, I think it does help and it helps them achieve those goals uh, like you said. Yeah. And I've had, I mean, that's probably the number one issue with my bad reviews is when people think that a course isn't advanced enough, even if we call it a comprehensive masterclass or whatever, it's nice and sexy to call it a masterclass. But if students aren't feeling like they're mastering that subject or it's advanced enough, you're going to get bad reviews. So you have two options. You can either not call it the comprehensive master class, learn everything from beginner advanced class, or you can add content to it to try to make it that master class, which might not be something you have when you launch it, just because you might not know exactly what students necessarily want or feel is advanced enough. 
So, um, but one thing that I would st- say <laughs> is listen to people and take action. I mean, when I was beginning, I remember getting those reviews and being like, why am I, I'm getting all these bad reviews about, you know, <laughs> the class not being advanced enough. But it's like, dude, just like, well, either don't call it advanced class or do something about it to make it advanced. Right. Uh, so you really try to listen to those reviews and, and take action. Yeah, I think I think that's really smart. And in doing all these things, it hits all these points that we talked about targeting a specific uh, customer and branding your course the right way. Um, And I talked about having maybe an overarching goal versus, you know, smaller goals. And you mentioned it might be dependent on the course. Um, And I do believe that even a smaller course that's uh, very specific, like you said, how to create an intro bumper and after effects for beginner, that's a very specific thing. But I think people should still be thinking about the individual lectures or videos. Mm-hmm. What is the main goal in that video mm-hmm. to get them to the next step? Because mm-hmm. you want them to progress. And you mentioned here, you know, it helps students feel like they are learning. Um, you don't want them to get burnt out halfway through the course and they don't feel like they're, you know, learning anything new. So I think you could also have goals for individual lectures. If it, even if it's just you thinking, what can I at least have them learning by the end of this video or what can I have them do by the end of this video, Mm -hmm. you know, and after effects, it might be, uh, setting up a composition or, Mm -hmm. you know, creating a layer or creating a text layer. That's still like a, kind of like a mini goal that you could have within that specific overarching goal. Yeah, and I love that and kind of combining that with trying to make sure that the goals, you're showing that the goals are real world skills is important in any class. Uh, some of this stuff becomes so theoretical and we're talking about it in our videos where we have slideshows showing, you know, examples maybe. But until the student is actually there themselves, like, doing something that is practical in the real world, whether it's taking a photo of their family that is perfectly exposed and in focus for the first time, or, you know, making your first pizza dough or whatever by yourself, having activities like that can also help them understand that they're achieving their goals and learning things that are our real world. So it kind of ties together um, with activities too. You might want to think about every section having an activity that is what the goal is about for that section or after mm-hmm. a specific video uh, having like an activity or or like a real world world demonstration. Like for example, in our photography class, we're not always having activities, but we'll teach them, okay, this is what Aperture does. This is how it affects exposure. And that's what we did for the first class, and we left it at that. But the feedback from that class was, we need to see this in the real world. And so right. in this new class, it's we teach you, here's Aperture, here's what it does, here's how it affects exposure. Now let's go out into the real world and see how we would actually use this when mm-hmm. we're out shooting photos. And that seems to be a better way to, to teach a course or a lesson anyways. Yeah, well, I think when you do that, you're also going to cut back on a lot of extra fluff, too, Mm -hmm. because everyone's, you know, a question we might talk about this in a later episode. How long should a course be? Well, you know, that's always a hard question to answer because it's not how long should the course be. It's how fast can you teach what you're teaching and the student retain that information. If you can teach you know, a a skill in an hour and you're very specific about the goals and you're able to definitely get to that quicker, uh, then you don't need an eight hour course of just Mm -hmm. fluff and theory and all this extra stuff. But I mean, if, if, if you need to add in that theory, you know, that that's part of it. But I think having these goals, you know, really helps set the mood of, of how you can get to teaching uh, that skill quicker than normally. So let's go ahead and uh, talk about some examples. Um, You know, one thing that we've talked about we like to do is how can we uh, pertain this to uh, different types of people who aren't just course creators or marketers or entrepreneurs. So let's talk about different types of courses that we could could give examples for and uh, how can you set a good goal for a course or for the section. So let's start with, um, let's do like landscape photography. So, you know, that's basically going out and film or shooting photos of landscapes. Am I correct? Whether it be Mm -hmm. deserts or mountains or trees or waterfalls or what have you. Can you think of maybe some good 
uh, goals uh, and examples that we could give for like someone who's creating a course on landscape photography. Yeah, and since I have a landscape photography course, I want to make sure <laughs> that my goals are are properly set and that I'm <laughs> explaining them properly and on my landing page and everything because <laughs> that's what we should be doing. And actually, now that we're talking about goals on Udemy anyways, it's very sort of clear that they want you to set goals because there's a whole section when you're building your course on the goals for this course. And so let me see what m my goals are because we should have some good examples of what a, a a goal would be like for landscape photography. And like always, we don't always want to just talk about photography or the course we have. We're going to be talking about some other ideas uh, coming right up. But um, now, now, real quick, let's yeah. just explain. So on Udemy specifically, there's a copy section on the landing page. When you go to the landing page, it will say the goals for this course are, and you list those out on Udemy. Now, if you're teaching on uh, Teachable, Thinkific, you're self-hosting, or maybe a different platform like Skillshare, they're not going to prompt you. But the reason why you think about the goals is so when you're writing your titles, and you're writing your copy and your paragraphs that you have those goals in mind and you're mm -hmm. you're saying those to the student. So on Udemy, it's very specific. What are the goals? I'm going to teach you how to you know shoot better landscape photography. But if you're self-hosting, it might be in a paragraph mm -hmm. as you're explaining your course. In this course, you are going to learn how to shoot better landscape photography. So I just wanted to make that distinction there. Yeah, and for a lot of these courses, that that the goal is the overarching goal is as specific as sorry what am i trying to say it's usually just you're going to be better at this so for landscape photography the overarching goal might be you can take your own beautiful landscape photos or you mm -hmm. will learn how to take beautiful landscape photos and that's kind of what you're coming back to throughout the course is are we helping people do this but then it's broken down into more specific goals that we have on the landing page and this also kind of pairs with the sections of the course like you will learn what equipment you need to do landscape photography you will know how to you will understand the camera settings that are specific for landscape photography you will know how to use additional equipment like filters to make your landscape photos look better. Mm -hmm. You will know how to use the right lens for landscape photography. You will know how to edit photos, landscape specifically photos, to make them look better. Uh, so those are like some of the goals that we have in the course. And you can see like even with a landscape course, which is not as big as a general photography course, there are lots of actual mini goals within that one topic too. Yeah, and a good way to go about this um, again, is to think about what the student would be facing or what questions they would be asking. Um, so if I want to learn landscape photography and I know nothing about it, um, I might go shoot out in the desert one day and all my photos are overexposed and then I go shoot in the rainforest and everything's underexposed or vice versa. And I say, you know, why is this happening? Mm -hmm. how, how can I have better exposure for my photos so that they all look, you know, nice and even and natural. Mm -hmm. You want to think about the questions that the student would actually be asking and maybe come up with uh, some of those goals. Yeah. Um, let's move on to the next one. Uh, did you have any more for landscape photography? No, I think that's, yeah, that's a good general overview of them. Okay. And, and we can do a couple of these. Uh, we have some written down. If you think of any more, we can do them. We did, uh, we wrote down sourdough bread. Uh, one of our examples we love to always uh, mention, shout out to Teresa. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I so, think it's uh, a good example because it's kind of like a, it's a very specific fix skill. Like you could translate this to any sort of hobby, uh, you know, cooking or baking anything, uh, mm -hmm. any sort of DIY, DIY, crafts. handicraft, sewing, quilting, whatever it is. But I think, again, for sourdough bread, the overall goal would be, well, maybe it's, I don't know, learn how to make sourdough bread mm -hmm. or learn how to make better sourdough bread, learn how to know, bake the best sourdough bread you've ever made, um, learn how to make sourdough bread that tastes like it does in San Francisco or whatever it is. It could be sort one. of <laughs> like, that could be like, uh, I think all those goals I kind of said are kind of the same goal same goal but it's how you phrase it is different and you might need to try these different sort of phrasings of it um mm. to see what sells better 
Um, but that's kind of for that class, I would say is learn how to bake sourdough bread is basically the goal of that class. It's pretty simple, well, I'd say. And then uh, another point to that is why is the student wanting to learn how to bake sourdough bread? Mm. Because there could mm-hmm. be different reasons. Yeah. Uh, maybe the holidays are coming up and they want to have sourdough bread for the holidays. And so they're doing it on a personal level so that they could bake that bread. Or maybe uh, they have a bakery and they already bake bread and they want to learn how to add sourdough bread to their bakery mm-hmm. menu. Um, so you kind of want to think about those things too, like why why would the student be wanting to learn this activity and uh, could you be specific enough to target it to that audience and say how to make uh, sourdough bread for the holidays or how to make sourdough bread to add to your bakery menu or, you know, something mm-hmm. better than that title. But, uh, you know, think about, you know, the student and, and why they're trying to learn that. Um, these I love because... I don't want to say that any of these topics are simple, mm-hmm. but I love these type of topics because they're very uh, orderly. You yeah, know, it's one, easy to three, four, yeah, A, B, C. You know, like what what's step A? Uh, you know, getting the ingredients. What's step B? Mixing the dough. What's step C? You know, and so forth. Um, so I really like these kinds of courses. What yeah, about I you? guess <laughs> I'm wondering. Let's make it a little harder for ourselves. Like um, mark, like talk about marketing. Uh, which you you're creating a course. I have a digital marketing course myself. That was actually a course that it's hard to like really come up with one overarching goal that encompasses everything. Like yes. become a digital marketer or right. learn how to market. <laughs> like that's not a good goal. Um, I mean, right. there's some people that might see that and think, oh, well, that's yeah, exactly what I want to learn. But what does that really mean? And for, for, so it goes beyond, beyond that. And I think for a lot of people, it's like learn how to market so you can increase, increase your business or grow your business or sell more products. Uh, What's like the benefit of learning marketing? And then of course, in the course, like, what are you learning? Are you learning YouTube? Are you learning Google ads? Are you learning Facebook? And, and why are you doing that? Are you learning it to be able to, um, you know, get 10,000 followers? Are you learning it to be able to uh, reach people around the world? Are you learning it just so that you can't, learning YouTube just so you can host videos and embed them on your website? Uh, Mm -hmm. Those are goals that you have to, as the expert, kind of figure out. Is there anything else, though, like you thought about or you're thinking about while you're coming up with this marketing class? You, You hit it right on the head. I immediately ran into that because we talked about, you know, brain dumping before. And I had all these ideas that I want to put in this course. You know, I want to talk about social media and I want to talk about podcasts and content marketing. So I write these all down. And I've got all these different ideas. And then, you know, we talked about structuring the course. How am I going to put this into a logical order? And you really have to get inside of the mind of the student and think about the progression that you want to take them through. Like you said, not many people just say, I want to learn digital marketing. You know, Mm -hmm. uh, some people do. Me and you probably would say that. But most people out there, like if you had a landscape photography business, you, you're not thinking to yourself, I just want to learn marketing. Um, that's not common. But you do want to learn how to grow your Facebook presence or your mm-hmm. YouTube presence, or you want to learn how to do better branding or have better exposure out there. That's what marketing does for you. So yeah. you got to have in mind, what is the goal of the student? Their goal isn't to become a better marketer. Their goal is to get more clients for their landscape photography business. Um, So once you have that in mind and you start thinking about the goals, it becomes a little easier to break it down. But yeah, that course is proving to be a little trickier because it's not just a simple Mm step-by-step one, two, three. You know, you could put most of that information in any order and you have to think about the the end goal and then the ed- individual goals and how you're going to walk that student through that progression. So I think you explained it really well. That that one's definitely a, a little trickier than, um, you know, like a Photoshop course where I was teaching them, click this layer, yeah. click this color, render it, you know. <laughs> and, and sometimes you have to listen to your audience to see what what are their goals when they're enrolling in a class and maybe cater to that? Like with my digital marketing course, um, we really taught it in the sense of someone who has their own business and wants to grow their own business. But we get a lot of students who are asking us, is this course going to help me get a job as a marketer? Is this 
course going to help me yeah get some sort of job and our response is always well yeah if you know, learn these skills they're definitely highly valuable skills that should be able to help you get a job but i think as an instructor i need to think of a way to either make it clear that well if that's a part of the course then make it clear that it is how is that a part of the course? Maybe like earlier in the course, we need like a lesson or some sort of guide talking about how you can use the skills in this course to get a job um, or something like that, because that's one area I keep getting that kind of question from this one course. And I have I didn't really think about it that much while creating the course. Uh, so just a reminder that you might find goals that students want um, from after you've launched a course and it's important to listen to yeah. them. And I want to also not go off on too much of a tangent here, but we talked about researching courses, and this is a good part of doing your initial research, is going through and looking at reviews of courses and trying to find these kinds of things that keep popping up. Mm -hmm. So if, you know, uh, Phil's got 100 reviews and 20 of those reviews are, is this going to help me become a, uh, you know, get a job as a, a marketer? That might be a good course idea for you. Specifically say digital market or, you know, how to get a job as a digital marketer mm -hmm. might be another offshoot of a course that no one's even um, supplying that. So um, I think those are some pretty good ones that we talked about. We talked about, you know, uh, the landscape photography and how you could have some goals there. We talked about maybe some step by steps like caking, uh, cooking or baking <laughs> tongue twister or uh, DIY stuff. And we talked about maybe entrepreneurship and marketing things that don't have a necessarily, you know, step by step set of instructions. Um, is there anything else as far as goal settings that you can think of that you'd like to add? I think it's just make sure that you're honest with yourself and with the students and you're clear about this so that, like we talked about earlier on, the students are aware of what they're getting into. They're not being over-promised anything. Like for the digital marketing example, uh, really quickly, there's some courses or some people who might want to start their own digital marketing business. And that's not really what our course teaches. We teach other types of businesses how to do digital marketing but we don't go into like starting your own digital marketing company and how to find clients and that kind of stuff so be honest with yourself and make sure that it comes across especially in your in your promotions and your landing page because it's gonna end up being good for you in the long run to for better reviews and everything like that that's right Awesome. Well, this was a good episode. Hopefully people were really enjoying it and digging it. Um, and if you have any questions about coming up with better goals, or if you have any thoughts or ideas, make sure that you join the Facebook group. It's the Online Course Masters Facebook group. Just make sure you type that in on Facebook and you should find it pretty easily. We've got hundreds, if not thousands of instructors on there now who are helping each other out every day. So that's one of the ways that you can continue this conversation when the podcast is over. And of course, head over to onlinecoursemasters.com. If you want to take this to the next level, if you want our one-on-one -on -one mentorship and a complete masterclass program for learning how to teach online courses, you can check that out at onlinecoursemasters.com. Anyways, hopefully you enjoyed this episode and we'll see you in the next one. Bye, Jeremy. See ya.